do egg weights really work? Do they make you punch harder and faster? It's a question that you've asked me offline, get the email all the time, and you're talking about these. These are egg weights. It's a handheld weight, it goes over your middle finger, you close your hand around it, and you practice shadow boxing or shadow fighting with it for self-defense, for boxing, for martial arts. These have become very popular. I've had these for many years. I've had them in Ohio, so at least five years. And I have two sizes. I have a pound and a half that goes in each hand. That's three pounds. And this one, I think, is um, a pound. So two pounds, a pound in each hand. And the way these are made, these are made with bismuth. And I'm not a chemist or a metallurgist. But if you know anything about it, bismuth is a heavier, I think it's a blend of metals. And I think it's the same kind of derivative from a metal that they use in, in batteries or something. You guys can let me know in the comment section about bismuth. But what it does is it makes it a lot heavier than the same size piece of metal that would be just pure metal, like steel or something. So these are a lot heavier for the size. In the past, we always had to use like those little hand weights, like a five pound hand weight or a one pound hand weight sticks out on each side. If you've ever done that, and every once in a while you smack yourself in the teeth and that hurts. But what these do is these allow you to close your hand over it and get a good cardio workout. You get to get stronger. But the question is, do they make you punch harder and faster? And for self-defense, especially as you get older, if you're anything like me, you want to be able to hit somebody hard enough to make them stop. You want to hit them with stopping power. You want to break a jaw. You want to knock them out for self-defense if you can. So you would say, well, should I invest in a pair of these? There's a link below if you want to see what they cost. But they're not super expensive, but they're not cheap. So is it worth it? That's a really good, important question. That's why you keep asking me. Um, it's like, I don't know how they're getting popular again, but every once in a while, I'll get like once a month a question, are egg weights worth it? Are they good or are they garbage? And I wanted to answer that for you. I have a board here. I was gonna try that one inch Bruce Lee punch. And I know what you're thinking, boards don't punch back. That's right, <laughs> they don't. And this is not a video about why martial artists break boards when they do. Jiu-Jitsu guys don't break them because you can't rear naked choke a board, can't arm bar a board, although it might be fun to try, maybe see if you have what your grip power is. But it's not about whether you can break the board or not. I thought maybe we would try that at the end. It's been a long time since I punched a board. I don't know if I can do it or not. So you have to stay to the end and I'll try it. Or if you're watching this after, just go to the end. You want to hear me talk about egg weights. But I wanted to show you some of the basic things that I do. I do use these a lot in my classes. I lose these for the boxing especially, especially when I get somebody who needs to slow down their punch a little bit, because this is gonna slow you down when you put it in your hand because of the extra weight. Now, I like to do a 1,000 punches in a workout, especially when I'm working with somebody who is a little bit more seasoned, who's practiced a long time, we're working specifically as an older person on getting more fit. I think it's good for brain elasticity, but it's also good for getting the heart rate up, and we'll punch 100 punches, per round, the hardest way to do this, and if you've never done it, you've got to try it. It's easy to hit a bag 100 times, because when you hit the bag, your hand bounces back and allows you to throw the next one. Also, don't ever drop your hands. If you want to go for 100 uh, punches in a round, do them without dropping the hand. Every time you drop your hand, keep track, do 10 push-ups. Every time you do that, you'll stop doing that. But just throwing 100 punches in the air without anything in your hand is going to burn your shoulders up a little bit. And you're going to feel it, especially you get two, three, four minutes in, you'll start to feel that. Do a round with 100 punches, give yourself 30 seconds of rest, do another round. If you put the egg weights in your hand, it's going to dramatically change the strength in your shoulders. So the first thing I'm gonna say is, after many, many years of using these, I use these on a regular basis, I use these for all my students who've been here for a while, I'm gonna say yes, it makes your punch a lot harder. And again, there are two weights, always start with the lowest weight, because the shoulders are a small muscle group. Even if you're a big macho man or macho woman and you can lift a lot of weight, do a lot of push-ups, start with a lighter weight and work up to a heavier weight, just like you would do with Indian swinging clubs. Now, I like to use these, cadmium, that's the metal I was thinking about, but the, the, the pound and a half in each hand, and if you wear a good pair of boxing gloves, it's usually about 16 to 18 ounces, so you're getting a pound on your hand anyway, if you wear a good, like a real pair of boxing gloves. Some of the Everlast stuff or the cardio gloves or some of the MMA gloves, they don't have enough weight. 
But these, you can, you can carry these. I carry these when I go on vacation. This is a way that I get my heart rate up. I love to do jumping rope, uh, but you can't always do that when there's somebody downstairs, unless you have good foot control and you're not pounding the floor. But you can put these on. You can start throwing your punches, practicing your combinations, moving, slipping, turning, and throwing with these over and over again. The longer you have them in your hand, and again, like I said, start with 100 punches in a round. Your heart rate's gonna go up. You're gonna break a sweat like I am. Before I started this video, I did four rounds with these, some 400 punches in. My shoulders are burning. Every time I use them, I get the same sensation. Uh, as, even as, and I always say this, you don't get, they don't get lighter, you just get stronger, right? It's like push-ups. They don't ever get that easy. You just get so strong that they don't bother you anymore. Same thing with the egg weights. You're gonna feel them, those first few weight workouts. And then about three, four weeks in, they're not gonna burn you. It's gonna take you a little bit longer to get that sensation, but you're still going to be adding muscle. But it's not just muscle size, it's dense muscle fibers. You're gonna get that explosiveness. So do they make you punch harder? Yes, we said that. Do they make you punch faster? I'm gonna say in my experience, they make you punch a whole lot faster when you're pushing yourself and you start to do more punches in a round, more punches, more punches, and then especially if you can start to work your footwork in, bob and weave a little bit, slip a little bit, duck just a little bit, don't duck too much. If you do MMA, you'll get a, a knee in the chin, right? But learn how to move your body, throw your punches, move your feet around, never drop your hands, put the timer on, and challenge yourself. So the answer is, in my experience, this is one of the best investments I've ever made. And, it, and they're just, they're so dense, I can't even explain it. Until you put one in your hand, you won't believe what it feels like. The greatest thing is, nothing sticking out of your pinky side, like if you held just a cardio weight. And like I said, those old weights, I've done it many times. You bust yourself in the chin, bust yourself in the mouth. I've never knocked out a tooth, but this just makes it so much easier. They look cooler, right? They feel great in your hand. For those of you who love self-defense as much as I do, that is a weight in your hand that if you use that for self-defense, you're easily gonna knock somebody out because your punch is so much heavier and so much harder. I'm not advocating walking around with egg weights in your pockets, but if you walk around with egg weights in your pockets so you can get a good workout between classes, between meetings, wherever you are, and you're serious about your self-defense or your boxing or martial arts, in a short period of time, you're gonna find that these are uh, adding to your speed and your power dramatically in a short period of time. So my answer is not garbage, definitely worth the price. In my book, that means high value, high value. It's a, not that big of a price. You can, again, you can check below that first link. And when these wear out, which they do, and I'll show you, they just pop off like that. They rip after a lot of use. You just get a new set, new sleeves. Actually, I think that they sent me extra sleeves. I've got a box of sleeves in the front. But you just pull that off. That's what it looks like without the sleeve. Hence the name egg weight. The heavier ones lose that. They look more like a capsule, like a, <laughs> like a big capsule. It's, and this is heavy. This one is kind of a coated. It's coated on the outside. The black ones, it's a little bit lighter. But this one, they're not coated. I think inside this looks the same but I've never pulled it apart. And they've lasted for years. So it's time to be white like water, my friend, right? Like I said, this is not a video about breaking boards, but recently you asked me to break a board. So I'm not gonna give you the why. I'll give you three reasons why. I changed my mind. Why we break boards in traditional martial arts. One, it's fun. <laughs> if you can do it, it's fun. Two, it, um, it helps people overcome a fear in their mind. And so it's a nice finishing point at the end of a belt to go to the next belt. And it represents something. Some people, it's very meaningful. They'll, they'll have all their boards they broke since they started in martial arts with their kids or adults. And they sometimes here we'll have all the other students sign it as a witness. I sign it. I always write something nice in Korean to make it like special and put their name on it in Korean, put the date on it, the color of the belt that they broke, the kind of kick because we usually do kicks in our style we do kicks and then hand techniques at the higher rank we used to break a lot of bricks too 
bricks and rocks, and it was just part of the part of the culture that I grew up in in martial arts, and I can show you how to do all that. But the third reason that you break a board is to test your speed. Now, there are two kinds of breaks on a board. And the first thing to know about breaking a board is that they bend before they break. If you hit block, like cement block, or a brick, or a rock, usually those are very dense materials, and those uh, there has to be a vibration that happens when you break it, and then those pieces separate. They se the molecules separate, and that's the break. On a board, because it's wood, it will bend before it breaks. And a lot of times, people who are inexperienced, they'll get the wrong kind of wood, or the wood will be facing the wrong direction. And I'll show you what I mean in case you want to try to break some wood. I don't recommend just walking around breaking stuff, but it's not that big of a deal. It's not really that much of a challenge once you know what you're doing. But you can see this is recycled wood. They build furniture out of this in Korea and China and then they, you know, other parts of Asia. And then instead of just destroying or turning it into sawdust, they take the extra pieces and they cut them with like a machining, uh, you know, CNC kind of thing. For those of you who know what that is, um, like a computerized machining thing. And then they glue it together. And so it, it, it will break about the same as a pine board, but you don't have to kill a fresh tree just to break some wood to satisfy your ego. That's the fourth reason. That's the fourth reason people like to break boards. It builds your ego up a little bit, which is not necessarily a good thing. Um, but the point is they're going to bend before they break. So in order to break it, you either have someone hold it like this, never like that. It's always going to break with the grain. The grain's going this way, so it has to bend and snap apart. The grain has to separate. If you were to hold it like this and they punch in the middle, it's not breaking because you're trying to break against the grain. So it has to be this way. See the grain's going this way. If you have a big knot, sometimes uh, beginners will look at a board. In fact, <laughs> it's not a nice thing, but something that we used to do in competitions just to kind of mess with each other, have a little bit of fun for the black belts, not the kids. We never did this with the little ones or the beginning adults. But with the black belts, you go out and you pick three or four perfect boards for yourself with great thin grain, nice and light. You can tell it's really dry. It doesn't have any sap in it because the more sap it's going to bend, it might not break. And when boards don't break, if you're holding a stack of boards like some people do and they don't break, all that energy goes back into whatever you're hitting it with. So if you hit this and it doesn't break, all that energy comes back into your hand. That's where people get injured. But, um, so we would pick a bunch of good boards for my demonstration, my breaking routine, and then you might pick up a couple of boards with big knots on it, a little bit uh, wet, and you give that to the other guy who's gonna do it, so just make yourself look better. Now, I never really did that. You'll have to decide for yourself whether I did that myself. And then the other thing that we did, which was always funny, was just smacking it over your head, and you break, and you do it really well, and then you give somebody else, and then they're gonna try to do it for their ego, and of course, you give them that board that doesn't break. Maybe I've done that, but only, only with other people who had done it to me before, so kind of a joke. All right, so Bruce Lee's one-inch punch. If you watch most people, and I'm not sure I'll be able to do it, when they do a one-inch punch, they really do this first, but it's so fast you don't see the pullback. So you want to be able to do it without the pullback. It's basically just accelerating from a dead stop. So if I were here, I would put my hand here, you need... Everything I say, you need to like knock somebody out. You need uh, full extension. You need rotation of the shoulders and hips. And if you can move the body forward, and if it breaks, then you've done it right. If it doesn't break, then you've got to break it. You've got to hit it again. So I'm going to leave this in. This is what it looks like when you don't break it. And I wanted you to see that because you don't always break it the first time or the second time. But by the third time, you better be able to break it or you're gonna be embarrassed when you walk away for the demonstration. Now, you have to go back and watch and figure out, put in the comment section below why I didn't break it the first two times. And I didn't do that on purpose. I tried to break it. I know why I didn't break it, but I want you to put it in the comment section below. And it wasn't a lesson. That was just me making a mistake and not breaking it. But you guys have been awesome. Thank you for watching this. If you've been thinking about getting a pair of egg weights because that's what this was about. The, the board breaking was just my ego. Get yourself a pair. You will increase your speed. You will increase your power. 
and then share. You can you can like redo the, the the last part where I'm not breaking it and put up some videos like that. Then I would appreciate it too. That would be funny. Anyway, you guys have been awesome. I will see you in a little bit.